Lisa's on too. Yay, Lisa, welcome. Oh, yay. <laughs> no. Other Lisa too. You too. Other Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> Great. Um, so, okay. Well, I heard you were wondering about what my theme might have meant. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I, I do you have any ideas or do you want me to just spill the beans <laughs> we we came up with some ideas <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you like to share them or are you worried about sharing them I guess that's more the question <laughs> well uh so I was kind of thinking more of like on an esoteric level you know like not not anatomy wise, but more like, you know, in the body's in alignment, there's a natural joy or smile that comes out of, you know, some that emanates from somebody's energy. So I was kind of thinking out of it on that level. Yeah, that's that could be a result of yes, for sure. Um I was I was thinking physically about smile lines in the body okay. um too do you guys have any idea what those might be or have you used that feeling or thoughts or um the smile lines in the body or a smiling part of your body well my only thought was the glutes but <laughs> But then I should not use that. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of the glutes myself, but that's okay. We can talk about okay. smiling glutes. <laughs> so we don't know if we're here in San Rafael. Wait, we're not Lisa. sure. <laughs> some areas are overused and some are under until we get this. Like, I know that in the States, okay. come from hey, of muscles and some come from under you. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard, hard, to, hard to hear you, Lisa. Maybe you have to get closer to the computer. I'm not sure. I know. Okay. I have two screens and is that better? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, so like overuse of some muscles and underuse of others creating imbalance or Mm -hmm. yeah the wrong lines <laughs> yes that definitely does and so um i i think you're sort of on the right track or there's there's no right or wrong track honestly i think it's all good good thoughtful information to throw in there where i was thinking about is how do we get the body into place where your the lines of the body are following the right activation pattern so that's along the lines of what you were saying Lisa and then and then on the lines of what you were thinking Bajra, it's because once those lines are happening and everything's happening well then the whole body um, relaxes and it comes into a better place and the way that we act get the body there is by activating the stabilizing muscles right so um so the, the primary muscle, and I was sort of taught it, talked about, and I've heard a lot of other instructors using it, is um, that there are two places in the body where you can actually, those lines actually follow kind of a smile. And one is at the transverse abdominis and the obliques, right at that, right above that inguinal line, right inside the hip bones, right? So you can talk about smiling those areas open um, as, you're, as you're activating them. So you can smile that area open there. And then the other place that you can do it is up here in the chest region, right? So we can smile this open, which are two places where if we're actively working, we get that open and correct alignment and actually a lot of relief. I mean, I think I've definitely felt that relief where my deep abdominals are activating and when my upper is activating, right? So when this is open and wide, I feel much better than if I'm con constricted down in here. So for me, those are the two places um, where I feel like you can actually smile open in the body, yeah? 
So um, I think you could get, um, I think you could, you could actually incorporate that into any part of the body in any direction that you want after, but I was going to focus this next week on those two areas um, and see how people felt afterward after getting those two areas active and open. So um, does that, does that make sense or yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you want to try and feel it by laying down and going through a few of those motions? You want me to turn it up a little bit? (laughs) So if we went down to the floor, I'm going to find myself a little floor space. It's at a hundred. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. You can get this far enough away from me for you guys to see. Could you say something again, Zaina? I'm trying to figure out how to turn our volume. Yes. Oh. I can say lots of things. What would you like me to say? I could tell okay? you a story. Yes. <laughs> Does yeah, that we're sound good. better? Yeah, you're good? Okay. okay. All right. So if you were to lie down and... um. Just find, I think you could even just find it in breathing a neutral spine, right, first. And I really need tactile cueing here for myself. So I really need to dig in to um, those deep abdominals. And I find, I think first is just accurately identifying where those muscles are. So I find my ASIS. And I drop inside and then just a little low, as low as I can get and still be on, um, not, I, I think you could feel the inguinal line is kind of that uh, band that runs there. That's not where you want to be. You want to be just above that. And then if you press in there and take a breath in and then exhale, and you can feel as your tummy drops in that that area tightens up a bit then um, you can, that's where we want to feel like we're activating. And, and the truth is we go after transverse abdominis in that area, but the truth is that we're actually still feeling some obliques in there. So it's not purely transverse abdominis, but it is a good place to realize if it's active or not. And then when you think about smiling open, you can think about It's that pelvic floor lift that allows the width across that area as the belly drops in. So it's a very um, lift and widen on the floor as you're active that gets you there. And then you can release and relax, right? So finding that belly down, pelvic floor up, that transverses and obliques right there, you should feel like they become active. And that's what we're looking for right is just that opening lifting and it should feel like that line actually follows kind of a little smiling motion or a little bit down to up towards so pubic bone up towards ASIS right so there's a bit of that smiley face action happening so that's one place where you could think about smiling open and that should be able to help people find pelvis neutral versus just spine neutral I think the focus there is much more pelvis neutral than spine neutral for me um, and creating stability in there. And then from there, right, everything progresses. So maintaining that open and maintaining that pressure down. So both PSIS pressing into the floor and then one leg coming up, stabilizing enough with that open to bring the other leg up as well, right? So we're getting that same width open with the belly down, right, without compromising our position at all that way. Yeah? Any thoughts, comments? Makes no sense at all. You can even say that. That's fine. (laughs) (laughs) It makes a lot of sense to me. And I just played with it for a second just to not engage and then try to bring my legs up into tabletop. And it really hurt my, very different. aggravated my back. Yeah. 
So it's very different. It's yeah. a very different feeling if you're on or off. Something hard underneath me. <laughs> so yeah. uh, pulling, yeah. So stabilizing, finding that flatness and the width across to create a greater stability. And it really is just pelvis neutral um, and activity of transverse and obliques in that region, right? That's really all we're talking about, and plus pelvic floor, right? So it just engages all of that, comes mm -hmm. up and flattens wide and opens up. So it just helps get that kind of concave feeling. Um, you could feel it in uh, through the coccyx curl in a bridge as well, I think is a good place to feel it. I feel it a lot when I'm um, bottom lift on the reformer. Maybe because the legs are up a little higher, I really feel the dropping and the concave and the width across my lower belly. I call it my skinny pose, right? I feel like my guts just can go in and everything can drop in and widen out more in that position. So it's a great place to find that feeling. And then when you come back down pelvis neutral to still find that kind of concave feeling and the width across. So uh, also um, hips on the roller, I can sometimes really get that concave feeling as well. And that kind of scooping in and outward, creating that smile upward, right? And I think, um, so I sometimes joke around with my clients, I say, oh, we're, this is the skinniest you're gonna feel all day, right? So your belly drop the idea of that feeling <laughs> of the belly just sinking in and just making itself concave. Right, that allows that smile to happen, but it also gives me a lot of stability. So it feels really nice to have that stability there as I go. So, so that, and, um, anyone else have another way or a way that you think about that might help that or does that feel right or not right or? Um, it totally feels right for me. It gives a lot yeah. of stability in the lumbar, actually. Yeah. My, my hypermobile lumbar. Yeah. Yes. It really helps keep it out of falling into any extension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It awesome. kind of reminds me of that sort of that, um, sometimes that image of widening, yeah, through the ASIS, mm -hmm. like widening the pelvis to yes. the yeah. weight transversus. Yeah. I also feel, um, I'm used actually trying it in an upright position, but I, I understand what you're saying. And I feel like I'm actually able to activate the lower, the inferior portion of the psoas when I do that. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, I mean that it feels, and in yoga, there's an exercise where you actually roll your abdominal, like the, your intestines. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. seeing that. it reminds me of that because it really kind of just sinks you right into the lower cavity right there. It's very, and in, in terms of the Pilates teaching, it's so great to hear you kind of cue it because <laughs> At least at the studio that I teach at, they're, they're such go-getters. They like, I teach pelvic clocking and they're like, can we get on with this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> Cause it's more subtle, but it's so deep. And that, you know, so it's, I think the cueing for me is a challenge when we're, when we're working on this level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. And I think you're going to have to play with it. I mean, different clients will obviously respond differently to different cueing. Um, I think you'll have to be careful about um, how much pelvic floor versus how much deep abdominal you get. Um, and then just as an, a quick aside, that pelvic floor, if they're getting too much pelvic floor, that could be problematic too. So making sure your pelvic floor can contract and can release, not be held and squeezed for dear life because after that that creates more issue too so it's a matter of being able to be fluid in it too and to create motion from it but to give them a better base and it's literally a base right so we, we've just been through uh, this whole little series I've just been taking my clients through this whole different series of exercises with different themes um, we did back to basic, we did stability, and then we just were finishing this week with mobility. 
And so now this is like, okay, so now we've created all this. And now let's talk about how do you really get that lift up and open? So Genevieve, I'm curious how you feel with it, just because I know your body, Genevieve has a little bit of a tricky body with her back. Sorry, Jen, I'm, I'm talking about you, but I'm wondering if that makes any sense to you or. Um, I'm, I'm trying to feel it. I also, my back went out this morning, so it's a little oh, bit no. um, acute right now. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. So I'm trying to get that to like not be the main sensation I'm feeling. <laughs> um, but I think, I think I kind of feel it. I have trouble um, with the pelvic floor and the broadening, like to me, and also this idea of broadening um, almost feels like a um, vulnerable place to be, if that makes sense. Like instead of pulling together, um, which I tend to want to do with my pelvis and my, you know, just kind of and uh, yeah, so I'm trying, I'm feeling yeah. it. <laughs> okay, well, let me know. I'm curious to know if you play with it when you feel a little bit better, yeah. what it feels like. It, it should, like in Lisa's case, it should create a little more stability and really create that grounding, pelvic grounding in, in this case. Um, if, if we take it off the floor with that stability, the other way that you can feel it is in kind of that C curve. Um, so if we went to something really um, loaded and more, much more advanced, obviously, you could take it to this C curve here. So it's the foot in the stomach, which those of you who have worked with me a lot is, I would take two feet and put them in the stomach right here with a little turnout, right? So little V feet in somebody's stomach pushing up and out. That's the feeling that I would want in this sitting position. So it's here. And when I was teaching the C curve or this is a um, spine stretch forward at a moment, sorry. You wanna imagine that little turn out, pull and lift over. So I'm coming open from center pubic bone out to the sides right, as I'm coming over. So I'm staying with my spine here, right? And so it's the same thing here if I wanted to come up and allow some of that C-curve rolling belly in, I'm not gonna go down on it, right? I'm gonna go up over it here. So that lifting, if I took a little foot V like this, put it at my pubic bone and in my belly, that's the feeling of that opening. And then I could go from there and keep lifting it up as I go down, right? Keep lifting it over as I go down. And then the same thing coming up, which makes it so that as you're coming back, right, you need to kick up through here, pulling back, rolling over and come over your sit bones to sit your way back up. Right? Does that, do you feel that too? So that's, I, those of you who are in my teacher training, right? I would take my feet and place them right in your belly, right at that line, right in there at a diagonal to help kind of that motion of in and up feeling. So that's another way to play with it if that's something that's accessible to you or your client, right? Not all of our clients obviously can roll through their spine or load their spine that way. But that is the same feeling. It's a width across and it's a lifting and a hollowing feeling too. So that would be a more loaded way to get there when we're talking about that lower part. But um, if you can do it, I would recommend trying it. And, and you could try it with um, a partner or you could try it even if you put like a, just holding on to the bar or the reformer of straps or the bar that way you have time to really feel that lift and you can really come up, come up to go down rather than go down and squash and load. So it's this feeling like something's always carrying you upward as you're going downward. Yeah. Um, so any other thoughts on that? Or we can go to the upper. 
yeah. Yeah, just since I saw you last time, I meant to email you and update you, but I'm much better. I've been doing a lot of rollbacks with the rollback bar at the studio. And that's where you can, that helps me with a lot of support to get. Mm -hmm. So it could be something to try if anyone has access. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, I think like two weeks ago or whenever I saw you last, I don't think I could have done that, but I can do it today. Oh, After awesome. what? Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's helpful. Great. Um, okay. So moving upward, right? What are some, I have a lot of thoughts about how to get this area to smile open and I'll just give you my first one and then I'll see if you guys have some to add. So if I was going to, my pet peeve, right? Is any, we're so forward in life life is so forward that most people end up closed and tightened in the, in the front of the body and it's closed. So um, <laughs> regardless of the posture, right? We're shut down in the front, um, eating, computers, writing, um, driving, all a lot of the sports are really closed forward. So, <laughs> excuse me. So I'm always fighting with myself and with my clients to find ways to keep this open. And then we do have exercise in the Pilates repertoire that bring the arms in front, which I think is good training if it's done right, right? So if we took Aga Tree, that would be the one that I would look at, focus on. I tend to really teach Hug a Tree from here, fingertips together actually. So I'll have them come and put Hug a Tree out here first. So my elbows are wide, my shoulder blades are down, right? And my elbows come up from there and my fingertips come together. And then when I go to open, I'm only opening to the place where I can still see my fingertips and my peripheral vision. So that for me is just about here, right? Otherwise I have to turn my head to see my fingers, right? So I, I stay here and I keep that lift and width and the elbow width, I keep talking about elbow width. So as if I could, I'd have somebody pulling my elbows sideways to make this a bigger space. And if I do that, and that's the tree trunk, right? And then I can go squeeze the tree trunk and open out from the tree trunk, right? But I've kept this big bowl of space in front of me and I never went to dead bird. And I told that to one of my classes once, Peter, if it was, you know him, one of our great friend clients, he was like, I, he started laughing in the middle of class. A dead bird, I love that dead bird. I'm never going to be a dead bird again. You know? <laughs> but because it feels like once they go here and the arms go behind, the chest pops, the elbows bend, like the dead bird wings, right? Yeah. So, so I start them out bending in. Then I get this big open bowl. And this would be beautiful, right? If we, every time we brought our arms in front of us, we were still open in here. So that's that open smiling collarbone. So clavicle to first ribs and second ribs, just open and then bending around, right? And then I can keep that open. So I don't have to be here or here or here or here. You've seen all of these, right? Yeah, so, um, so to get there, that's the problem, right? Some people just aren't gonna get there. Um, because of tightness, so tightness in the anterior structures, which develops over time, or weakness in the upper back. And so I think if, if I had to pick one over the other, I really probably couldn't. I think they go really hand in hand. So the more time somebody spends forward, the tighter the front gets, but also the more stretched out the rhomboids get, right? And the, and the poor position that the serratus has so serratus can't help get the shoulder blades on the back anymore because it's been chronically in poor position. So there you go, I just gave you a hint, rhomboids, serratus, right? They're, they're key to keeping um, everything on your back, keeping your back on its back, right? So without those, no matter how loose I am in the pecs, I'm not gonna be in a wide, in a wide smiled open frame here. Right, so that's my smile. I need to keep that no matter what my arms do, especially as they come in front. So if I want to train that, I would take the arms behind the body, right? So we have um, 
I think a lot of you know these already, right? Um, prone is a great way to work that back body. So all the exercises we do, even doing sorry, just, um, here, right? All these, just this is just um, rhomboid activation, right? We have these. We also have the A's, and I really emphasize wrapping those shoulders back and down, palms towards the floor, and then shoulders running down. So trying to get the shoulder blades down towards the heels, let the shoulders roll open, right? And then you could work on moving through that range without losing that control, right? As the arms go up and around. Um, so that's all back body, everything, but even um, these, I've really started working on having them just shrug shoulders down, bring chest up, right? To open up, shrug shoulders down. And then I've had them working on head down and hands on the roller, pulling elbows up high and wide. So really just trying to get kind of that pec lat stretch that we do on the Cadillac with the bar, but I have their hands on the roller to open up the front. All of that smiles open the front here. The mistake that we have, and I actually was working with a client this week with Minjay and pulling the ropes on the box in prone. You guys know that one, right? So with the arms, as soon as her arms would come up by the sides of her body, the shoulders would go down, right? So that's really not what we want. It's training people to open there when their arms pull up to the sides of their body. Very different position here than here, trying to get the arms up. Right, so that's the smile open here. And it's just widening the space at the clavicle, the AC joint, um, and keeping it super nice and wide. Um, so back body, other things that work for back body are just simple rowing. So um, I use, we can use a TheraBand, also bent elbow rowing and straight arm rowing both. We do both with the TheraBand, bent arm, straight arm, and I usually have them pass the body with the straight arm rows to get them behind, watching out for this and correcting it to that yeah. opening, right? So smiling open the front of the, sh the, front of the chest. Yeah. So, and then your most basic things that will help that are gonna be foam roller, right? So arm series on the foam roller, we do um, arm reaches back overhead, laying on the foam roller. We do pec stretch on the foam roller. And lately I've been using a lot of, in this pec stretch, if the roller, if I was lying on the roller here, just rolling slightly one side or the other, because that really opens the opposite side chest. So um, if you just do a tiny roll, you'll get a little bit more on that one side. If so if one side is sometimes tighter than the other, that's a great way to also open that out. So the most basic one would be those kind of stretches, having people lay there for, I tell them to go home and lay on that roller while they listen to a podcast or a wonderful lecture on Pilates or a, t <laughs> a TV show, I don't know, something, but not to be idle while they're, you know, where they have time that they could actually be on that roller. So... So yeah, that is, um, those are sort of my thoughts on the upper. Any, any ideas, thoughts? When you're teaching that series, that over arm series on the roller, are you on a half roller or are you on a full roller and are, you're, you're on the ground, correct? Yeah, so okay. lying, lying, usually you could do a half or a full. I okay. put most of my clients on a full roller because I like them to have to work on their balance as well. Um, okay. So yeah. And then the overhead is really just getting that glenohumeral. So the glenohumeral stretch going more, which is important because they should be able to get the arm up without this compensation pattern. So it's gliding shoulder blade and just glenohumeral trying to get glenohumeral flexion um, rib cage neutral with that as well. Um, and then the shoulder slaps, right? You could do serratus press mm -hmm. without resistance or with resistance with a TheraBand behind. Oh, mm -hmm. and that was something else. With the hug a tree, with the band, I like to do it a lot of times with the band 
behind elbows under hug a tree mm -hmm. and that way when they come forward they can pull a little bit back into the band too which really helps widen the front you just you don't want that but you, they can feel that band across the upper back and it encourages that ribs down arms wide feeling and that connection through the middle a little bit more for me when I do it that way so the, I really like that one and I actually I have at first I started having people tie it around something at home, but then I actually like it better when they can feel it on their back. And I actually like that better than I do on the reformer now too, with the band right there. So they could actually feel what's happening across their back and they can sense what's happening here as the arms are going as well. So it's now actually my favorite hug a tree. <laughs> So that's so they're supine on the reformer with the strap seated. On, or seated okay yeah seated, seated. and hugging a tree okay. so you could do it seated or standing i think you could probably yeah genevieve's doing it right now i think you could probably do it lying on your back as well um i just hadn't yes and i i like to tuck the elbows under the band genevieve if you yeah nope that way yes I think you could do either, but I like to have it that way. And then I can really, as I'm coming into that forward, I can really think about that open and I get the connection to my upper back as well. Cool. If you have that. Yeah. So it's just a really nice feeling, I think, to have it back there. I don't know if you could feel that, Genevieve, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I encourage you to try that and see what you think. But, um, and then you, once you get that open feeling, right, everything changes. Even if you're doing something like lunging front punching, or even if you're doing butterfly, which is a pec exercise, right? Our arms coming in and opening. You still end up with this width across your upper back and this width in the front of you, you're not tensioning anymore. You're just closing, right? And opening because I'm keeping this, really wide open as I come into that, which is lo lovely feeling. And I think the right way to be in posture during your day. So not in this um, forwardness that we all get in. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts on that? And then we, ha we have, I keep going. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a chance to answer. I'm gonna give you a chance to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Now everyone's good? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so um, the other ones that really can help that are if the hands are behind the body. And I've been toying with this. So it, this goes way back to my gymnastics. I've been toying with it because I haven't found the exact right thing that I feel like is right for everybody. Um, so it's uh, this, we used to do hands behind you fingers pointing back, right? And then just shifting the hips forward and allowing the arms to open. Like you, this can go wrong, this is wrong. This would be right, opening. So the only thing that we have in our Pilates repertoire that mimics that is actually the control back on the floor, right? So control back, but in that we have our hands, fingers pointed at your hips, right? And then we have the, um, we're pressing up, right? And then down, and then it's the leg up, down, and up, down, right? So that's a, a lot more challenging, right? And, and yeah. really hard to get right. So I end up putting my yeah. hands. Yeah. You end, up, turn, you end yeah. up turning your hands? I do. I end up turning my hands to the side because this is, I'm so tight. It's really hard. Unless I, once I'm up, it's okay, but getting yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, I um I I like control back. It's just so far away for so many people. And I'm I wonder too if um but then I wonder if this is too much stretch, right, for somebody um in their shoulders. Uh it's mimicking sort of reverse arms on the Cadillac, right? So the bar behind when we go down, roll down with the bar behind and then forward and the bar goes up. That's sort of what it mimics is this stretch but I 
you know, with our population at the studio, we have a lot of older clients and I worry about that with those older clients. So yeah. Um, no Sorry, did somebody say something? Lisa, that would be a no go. Older clients, no go. No go for older clients. Yeah, potentially not. Or somebody with a shoulder injury. Yeah. yeah. Like Been doing more taking the band behind and doing mm -hmm. something like this to really get this open, mm -hmm. like, like mm -hmm. the springboard exercise. Mm -hmm. Oh, like the reverse arms on the springboard that we were doing. Reverse arms, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. we called it, I called it reverse arms. This is what I've been doing with the TheraBand. Sorry, I don't have the TheraBand with me right this second, but I will show you without it and you can know where it is. Um, so I've been having them, oh, I have to really change this. Sorry. Okay. I've been having them go into a lunge with the TheraBand on the back foot. So the band is behind me. And then I have them wrap their hands in the band here with the band mm -hmm. behind, open the chest and lift up. In fact, I did this this, mor this morning. So wrapping, they're lifting up, but the band's on the back foot. So it encourages this yeah. open and then you can row back here. And then Kim, to your point, then you can elbows bend, tricep press. So that was the other piece. Yeah. And since the band is behind, it encourages that smile line open a lot more. Then mm -hmm. if the band would be in front, as soon as the band goes in front, this is what happens to them. And I have to really pull, ask for the shoulders back. But if it's behind them already, it encourages that upright, encourages mm -hmm. that open. I my own band, thank you. Yeah, so um, that might be something to, to try while you don't have the equipment as much, or if you're thinking, you know, mat, mat um, work, trying to get away from equipment a little bit. These days we are. But um, that would be a nice way with the band at the back foot. Yeah, Kim's doing it just now. Yeah, and I actually take the lunge into quite a big, decent size lunge so that the back foot's behind a ways, right? And then wrap the shoulders open and the arms can come up behind you, straight back. Yeah, that's it. And because that band is coming from behind, like the direction of pull has a lot to do with what the reaction is of the person you're going to get out of the body, right? So that that's it, and the triceps. Yeah, so that's a really nice way to encourage that open with the pull from behind. That was, that's always my um, challenge I find on the mat is, is the pull from different angles and what yeah, it's doing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Any other ideas about that? I think those are really the things that I would work on. I think that I'll be working on this week a lot. Um, and then putting them back into things where their arms have to go in front of them to get to keep that wide open. So think about that big width and coming in open and but then reteaching the front work when they have that idea of the back being on and this open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking like the smiles that that we were talking about so fabulous um I'm wondering would there be a smile on the posterior aspect of the body yeah. oh there you go you can you start over if I just sorry we can oh, yeah. hear you for the um, yeah. well I love this work that like looking at these smiles in the front the, the anterior and I'm wondering if there's a a uh, smile in the back of the body, does that create a smile in the posterior aspect? Mm -hmm. Well, Kim was talking about the glutes. What, what I always think about in the back is less, of, I'm going to have you tell me what you were thinking, Kim, in a moment. But um, what I think about in the back is I call it the wings or the V. Um, I, I like to think of it as the V. And, and so what that V is, is really lat. Um, so from the anterior shoulder, lot down into this yeah. V at my tail, right? The sacrum being that V. So that going from here up and then wrapping into the front of my shoulder. So that's that feeling in the back. 
So it's kind of a smile, but it's really more sharp for me than that. It's those diagonal lines. And that when that's tight, right, we get internal rotation of the shoulder just because of lat insertion being anterior shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. So lat tight makes shoulders roll forward as well. So this is, it's all part of that. And that being open would be oh, like uh, that external rotation. Yeah. Do you have a client? Do you have a client? So that's similar to what I, it's, it's the counter of the front, really. Yeah. In the yeah, diagonal. that totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if I have, um, so Kim, tell us what you're thinking when you think glutes. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I mean, I was just, when she said the the posterior, I was thinking of here, just a little, okay. so far across, underneath yeah. the shoulder blades. And then I was joking yeah. about these, wanting to have more of that <laughs> smile. <laughs> <laughs> the smile That's goes away cute. as you age. <laughs> more stairs, run more stairs. Yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's a good point too. And that's the TheraBand behind the back on the hug of trees hitting yeah, right across exactly. that area too. So I think that that could be a great space for, um, feeling that open wide across the back. Absolutely. I totally agree. And then if you incorporate that with the lat V, um, I think that's, uh, we used to call it wingspan in, um, circus world just because I um, got so, we would get so big and developed in those lats. So coming up, you would really get that big V. So we would joke about everybody's wingspan um, and what we were gonna do with the wingspan because they didn't fit in any clothes of any normal size. So it was always this big joke about your wingspan V. <laughs> but, I was thinking yeah. of like Michael Phelps at Swimmers, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, he, ha he, there's no clothes that fit him properly. No, yes. none, zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. And male ballet dancers as well. They're very, very built from you. Why is that from lifting you think or from, from lifting and, and just ballet does require mm -hmm. that that hold through the back that you're talking about, you know, just mm -hmm. that expansive space, you know, ballet never close, right. never close in the front. Right. So, yeah, very strong yes. back from lifting, but also very open. Yeah. Posture. Yes. But, yeah. yeah. Even while they're lifting, they're still <laughs> looking like a male belly dancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So yeah, I think those would be our yeah. Think of our good power athletes or Superman is a good picture of that, and he was never hunched forward either. <laughs> 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 I saw yeah. someone who looked like Superman in Venice Beach, and I thought, is that for real? Yeah. Like, is that? I didn't think <laughs> that was possible. It was amazing, and he was dark skinned. It was beautiful, but it was almost like kind of sickeningly beautiful because it was so unreal yeah, right. looking because it was really like Superman big bubbly muscles <laughs> and this tiny little yeah, from this so tiny cool. little trunk you know it was amazing Funny. yeah yeah so I, I guess the thought now would be how do you put that into something um, that becomes a class Right, how do you cue that through a class? How do you um, take somebody on that journey in like a 45 minute to an hour time period and get them through that and have them come out feeling something? Um, and I think it, it, for me, I think where I'm gonna start on Tuesday morning when I get into this is really with the basic pelvic neutral without even really calling it pelvic neutral and finding that skinny pose right, where they're hollowed out. Um, and since we, we keep our class, the group classes pretty much back safe, I won't do the spine stretch forward over, but that might be something really great to incorporate into a class where you don't have to worry about that. So maybe in my super strong class, I can use that. But then um, in individual sessions, maybe using that as well. 
but teaching them that open lift at the bottom and then working a lot on the back body and, and then finding at the end of that, how to keep that stretch or the elbows wide, cueing elbows wide, finding hug a tree, maybe the band around the back, maybe the back rowing and then all the um, work pulling with the rotation of the, I didn't mention this, but I think a lot of you know it already from other stuff, but even when they're pulling back, but to actually take a moment and rotate the palms forward so the shoulders go back into a little external rotation really helps get that open. Even when people, it keeps them out of this and more, if you have to rotate the palms, you can rotate the whole shoulder with it back. So if you're cueing that, that could be really helpful as well. So, and then probably doing a lot of opening stretch, thoracic stretching, um, thoracic open with the roller across and then the other way with the roller, if you wanted to start to open uh, on the long way of the roller and even encouraging kind of that extra rolling to open up one side versus the other of the chest could be great too. So yeah, I think that's gonna be my journey this week, but um, <laughs> if you want. If you want, join in. And if you don't, and you think I'm, you know, this doesn't work, there's so many other ways to get at the same thing. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think that was totally valuable and like so, so fun to be with you guys. And so appreciate you uh, hosting this, Zena. And I feel kind of remote here in Reno, but um, I, I have to jump off. But I just wanted to thank everybody so much for for yeah. being here yeah yeah thank you yeah. for joining us we love having you so yeah. Yeah. and i'm trying to clear my schedule on thursday so i can do this because it's super valuable I really appreciate it oh, great yeah. yay that would be great <laughs> okay. guys thank bye, you Roger. bye, bye. <laughs> uh, any other Actually, questions or comments or anything no uh, yeah, good to see you, Zaina, and everyone. Yeah. But Lisa, Genevieve, I just saw. Like, right. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. All Thank right. you. Zaina. I lost you guys for a while. Of bad internet. Um, anyway. Oh, it's okay. Oh. At least you were a part of us. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, great. It's great to see you guys always. But yeah, if you have thoughts or questions or something comes up or um, after you get to play with some of the stuff, let me know what you think. I mean, I think you guys have a lot of great tools that you think of too. So let me know what you've come up with. Um, and, and, and we can. I really like it, particularly in the pelvis, like straight away it connected with me. So it's really helpful for my hypermobile students. Um, mm -hmm. you know, people yeah. with, like mine, because it's very tricky to get the right activation there sometimes. Um, yeah, so no, I really liked it. Like that image. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, awesome. And so, all right. You're welcome. I will see you guys all soon again. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, you guys. Bye. Oh, I know one more thing. I run through all my little themes of the week. So if any of you guys want to throw an idea out there, I'm going to be recreating that probably tomorrow or over the weekend. And then, but if you guys have ideas for themes that you think would be interesting, let me know and I'll put them on the schedule and we'll play with them and see. So if there's something that comes to your mind or an area of the body, even anything that you think would be worth spending some time on, just shoot me an email and I'll put it in the, the mix. I'd love, I'd love that too. So Okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Have a great afternoon, Thanks. everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.